Okay, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is you're located. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Christian, also known as DC Born Rob or DC Rob. I'm going to jump straight into this story. But about a week ago, I put up a video entitled Dying for Sex in Medellin, Colombia. In that video, I told you in a part of it that there were certain amount of individuals that are coming up missing or bodies being found in Medellin, Colombia that were not identified. Who's to say who they are? Now, I received a call from Medellin about this um, and discussing those who have discussed with the medical profession there that says that some of these people could very well be Americans or, or other foreigners. And keep in mind, both governments have no incentive to put out there that a John Doe is an American or a Canadian or a European or an African. They do not want this information to get out there. Obviously, it's not good news. And again, I'm not going to report on it anymore, but this is a good story from El Colombiano that explains how it all happens. They explain how the people get on social networks, they get drugged, they get robbed, and some come up like these two gentlemen, they come up missing and unfortunately they uh, passed away. Okay, so let's jump into this story right here. I'm going to try something a little bit different. This is going to be AI, but uh, it's going to be AI using my voice. So we'll see how this comes off. Let me know what you think also in the comments. If you ever get any benefit out of my videos, do me a favor, hit like and subscribe. Let's jump straight in. Nine foreigners have died this year at the hands of crime in Medellin. Two of them died from the effects of scopolamine and five cases are associated with excesses in rumble with liquor and toxic substances. There are two more to be established. Social networks have been the beginning of his nightmare. Richard Evan Clark and Paul Wynn were the two foreigners who died in Medellin after being given scopolamine. The recent death of two foreigners in Medellin demonstrates the great risk faced by those who come to the city looking for entertainment, using, in many cases, the contacts they make through social networks, taking advantage of the dollars, jewelry, and valuables that foreigners carry on their travels. Criminal networks set their tentacles on them and harass them with false profiles to seduce, drug, and in some cases steal their lives. At least two of the nine victims of foreign citizens that have been reported this year in Medellin died under the influence of scopolamine, while another five have yet to determine the circumstances of their death, and another two were classified as homicides. To this is added the murder of 45 Venezuelans in Antioquia, of which 26 were in Medellin. Richard Evan Clark, from the United States, and Paul Wynn, from Vietnam and the United States, were the last two victims to be added to the tragic list. Their relatives and friends denounced that they lost their lives while conversing with unknown women, a date from which he did not return. Paul Wynn, Vietnamese, who was based in the state of California, had come to Medellin for tourism and to make his trip more enjoyable. He contacted a woman through the Tinder social network. On the night of November 10th, the last thing that was heard from him was that he was in a commercial establishment in the company of a woman, of whom he recorded on his social networks. A few hours after uploading the photos, he did not answer his messages or his phone line from him. A day later, on a street in the El Cucaracho neighborhood, northwestern Medellin, the lifeless body of a man appeared, lying next to garbage receptacles. Since he had no documents, he remained as an unidentified body, but his physical features made us suspect that he was a foreign citizen. People who knew him here began their search and when they arrived at forensic medicine they confirmed that Paul was dead. But his victimizers, meanwhile, made purchases with their credit cards, at least two of them were registered in a store in the Los Colors neighborhood, according to their relatives. They drugged him with his friend. Not only is partying in the street dangerous for foreigners, the story of Richard Evan Clark, a 72-year-old American, moved the neighborhood of the Lorna neighborhood in Laurels, where he had lived for four years. A relative of the victim told El Colombiano that on the night of November 6, two women with masks arrived at his apartment who had visited him before. It was the second time they had gone and, apparently, with the idea of delivering the blow, he commented. Richard received them along with another friend, who had better luck than him. According to Richard's friend, who was very close to him, they began to chat with them, eat and drink some intoxicating drinks. Then he recounted that after a while he lost consciousness when they began to pour oil all over their bodies, simulating a massage, said the relative. When he woke up the next day, the scene brought him out of his torpor. Richard was completely naked and without vital signs. The two women they had contacted through social networks were not there, as were some valuables. After Richard's death, it was found that the women also took his credit cards. The residents of the Horace Building remember him as an affable man, of whom they had no complaints in the four years that he lived there. Scopolamine attacks 
These two cases reveal the actions of criminal structures that are focused on going after the trail of Colombian and foreign tourists, who, interested in meeting women or men, depending on their preference, end up being victims of theft or sexual abuse. According to the Medellin Secretary of Security, this year there have been 313 cases of personal theft. 37 thefts from residences and 23 cases of sexual offenses through the use of scopolamine. Colonel Omar Rodriguez, Operational Undersecretary of the Medellin Security Secretariat, explained that one of the modalities is the use of women who profile the victims. Another is the use of social networks by criminal groups that take advantage of them to meet people and find dates. Confident in their fun plans, foreigners go to public establishments and that is where they fall into the hands of these criminals. The areas where they operate the most, according to the municipal authority, are public roads with 21%, while bars, discos and the like represent 18% of the thefts with the use of scopolamine. The main points in the city where these thefts are recorded are Parque Yers, the two parks in Laurels, Cara Setenta and the La 45 sector in Manrique, said Undersecretary Rodriguez. The official assured that in most cases, these structures operate independently of the regime of organized crime groups already recognized in the city. The form of supply of criminals to take away the will of their victims almost never involves supplying them with pure scopolamine. They always use other substances so that their victims lose their will and do not become aggressive. Generally, it does not occur alone, but rather it occurs accompanied by other substances because it alone produces states of excitement. When it is given alone, pure, the patient will turn red, hot and aggressive, but will have memory disturbances. But since the criminals do not want that person to become aggressive, because it would attract attention, they mix it with other types of substances or medications, explained the clinical toxicologist at the CES clinic, Julian Zapata Alvarez. Blows to the bands. By action of the authorities in the last year, three structures related to theft with toxic substances have been dismantled, which have led to nine arrests. One of the most relevant captures was that of Juan Esteban Caro Yeps, who made himself known in the dating networks of the LGBTIQ community as the engineer. According to the records of the authorities, Caro Yeps gained the trust of his victims and supplied them with a substance in their drinks to steal valuables such as money, jewelry, and even cars. According to the records provided by the prosecutor's office, this man had more than 50 complaints for this kind of theft since 2018. He accepted the charges for the crimes of qualified and aggravated theft of greater amount in a homogeneous and successive concert and is already at awaiting his sentence. The second procedure against this crime was against two men and a woman who were dedicated to profiling their victims and contacted them through social networks to then supply them with substances that made them lose consciousness. The criminal gang Los Escapolomenas was also dismantled by the authorities after two men and three women were captured, dedicated to drugging their victims to steal their money through bank transactions. The end of year alert. According to the toxicologist Zapata Alvarez, cases of intoxication with substances increase in December due to the celebrations, as well as due to the payment of premiums and other extra-legal ones, in some cases. Given this scenario, Colonel Henry Bello, operational deputy commander of the Metropolitan Police, pointed out that there is already a device of more than 1,100 men to prevent theft in the city and guarantee the safety of visitors, the main objective of the criminal gangs that use scopolamine as a weapon. We are making articulated plans, preventively in different sectors of the city, where we are giving recommendations to citizens. It was also arranged to send flyers in different parts of the city to prevent us from being victims of any criminal conduct where these substances are supplied to us, said the officer. We have a YouTube channel. Like it! Please comment and share if you like the video. Please subscribe and kick the bell.